Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and welcome to Knife AQ number 57, the knife series where I answer all your questions whether they're sharp or dull. This week we're comparing some kind of well-known do-everything style of knives, some construction knife options, and even something so simple but so important as what are some of the best Torx sets out there you can get to adjust your knives. Let's get into it. All right, everyone, thank you, as always, for your questions uh, for this Knife AQ series. It's one of my favorite things to do here uh, while I'm at the job. If you want a chance to have one of your questions featured in a future episode, you just drop those down below in the comments section for us to review them and look over them and have fun with them. Um, First off, this week comes from Josh. Good, strong, eponymous name. Uh, I'm having a hard time deciding between the Spyderco Native 5, Paramilitary 2, and the Benchmade Griptilian. I'm looking for an EDC that can do some light tactical if necessary. I'm going hiking and staying in a camper van, so I need something that will do it all, including cutting food, but is also durable for long-term EDC use. $150 max range. All right, cool. Um, we kind of touched on this a little bit in one of our uh, Between Two Knives episodes with me and Seth, uh, with kind of this do everything, outdoor, EDC, a little bit of tactical usage combined into one design. The one thing we didn't talk about in that video was food prep, which you've kind of brought in to, uh, to your question here. So, and that, that's where, again, there's so many different push and pull elements in the requirements for this blade that there's no one easy answer uh, as to what's best. So I'll throw a few things uh, at you, do some comparisons, and throw another model into the mix as well. Um, the first knife, the uh, Native 5 here, this kind of feels like the odd man out in terms of the knives you mentioned. Um, price on these on the lightweight versions is about 108, uh, 108.50, I think. Uh, the black coating is a little bit more expensive than that. And for hiking, the lightweight nature of this would be really nice. The lightweighter, uh, lightweightish nature of the Griptilian would be pretty good as well. Although the native native five is lighter, um, I'm less keen on this though for like tactical usages, just because it might be a little slow for you and maybe, maybe a little small. Uh, kind of all depends on your your uses a little bit. The full flat grind on the blade here would definitely do a good job for the uh, the food prep side of things, at least on the uh, the smaller scale that this size of a blade could handle. But it, it just doesn't quite feel tactical enough to me. Uh, so we'll move on to the Griptilian, which I think, as that video showed that, uh, we'll make sure to leave a link to where that we were talking about earlier, I think this is one of the great all-rounders and one of the greater folding knives that you can take into the outdoors thanks to the handle comfort, the blade shape, you know, the lock, whole nine yards. Uh, prices on these, about one ten fifty for the standard model. And nice neutral shape. It's going to work great for all those things. Maybe not the best for food prep though. Um, you have a flat grind, but it's kind of a half height or a saber height flat grind. Not the sliciest in the world, uh, but it would be fairly easy to keep clean thanks to the nature of the lock and the fact that you don't have ball bearings or anything in the pivot. Uh, in fact, you don't on, on any of the knives I'm about to show. Um, which brings us to the Para 2, the Paramilitary 2 which really great blade shape here, good all around stuff, obviously quite tactical, full flat grind is gonna work really well for the slicing stuff. Uh, I think this would probably be my choice based on purely the food prep side of things for these guys. Uh, the S45 VN steel that they recently upgraded to is quite nice. The compression lock is also quite nice. Hiking, yeah, you could absolutely do it, but I would want something personally with a little more handle comfort. This one doesn't quite do it for me uh, either. Day-to-day -day EDC, it's perfectly fine, but if I'm doing any kind of like wood carving or anything like that, I'm going to want something a little more girth, something like that Griptilian. Um, for that, and for the reason that these are getting a little bit more expensive nowadays, we're at about 155 so just over your, uh, your $150 range, I have another option for you to think about. And that is the Hogue, or sorry, the SIG K320, which is made by Hogue. Uh, the Knife Center exclusive versions of this knife are available with a stonewashed finish, although the standard models have a coating. And you get kind of a hybrid between 
some of the knives we just looked at. Blade shape, kind of a cross between the Para, the para 2 and the Griptilian. You've got traditional drop point shape, but you've got a higher flat grind, a little bit slicier, a little bit more comfortable in the handles. I'd say the Griptilian is more comfortable to me, but if I'm doing longer carving sessions, I think I would like this a little bit better than the Paramilitary 2. It's a little bit less expensive, like I mentioned. S30V, still a high quality steel. You've got the crossbar lock, easy to keep clean as well. Just another really good option that could do pretty well for you. And it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit lighter than the Para 2 as well. Let me check to make sure. Uh, 4.2 ounces on the Hogue and 3.9 ounces on the Para 2. About the same. So the specs, uh, specs made a liar out of me this particular time. None of these would honestly be a bad choice, but none of them are going to be kind of perfect for everything. Hopefully that gives you an idea of the, uh, the strengths and weaknesses of each, whichever one you think feels better to you, just based on the, uh, the specs or the uh, descriptions, go with that one. Or you just get a 12 inch machete. 12 inch machete is great, but probably a little heavier than just a, a hiker staying in a camper would want. You get used to it. <laughs> I have no problem with this. Next question comes from McCoyan IG. Uh, after watching the reveal of the Knife Center exclusive Sig Hogue K320, uh, which you just mentioned, I ordered one. Uh, amazing knife, but how does it compare to the Benchmade turret, which in my opinion doesn't get the attention it deserves? Sweet, let's do a, a comparison between those two guys. Um, both solid knives. I think probably the reason the turret doesn't get more love is the partially serrated edge. Uh, if you could get this in a, a plain edge profile, I'd actually probably own one myself because it's really good. I just don't really do combo edges. So if you're if you're into uh, if you're into combo edges, great. But if you're into a plain edge, the turret isn't going to have it. Uh, the turret's also almost a hundred dollars more expensive, and you get upgraded handle materials. Uh, but steel is actually the same here. You got S30V on these guys as well. You do have a little bit more blade length than the Hogue, as you can see. When I move back, uh, actual sharpened edge, you can see you got a decent bit more there between the two. Uh, as far as the handles, you've also got a little more length on the handles on the turret. And for me, these are a little bit more comfortable than uh, than the Hogue in my particular hands anyway. The Hogue's a little bit thinner. You've got a little bit more girth on the turret. Action, you've got crossbar locks on both. They work really well. If you're opening them with your thumbs, I'd give the edge to the turret and its thumb studs. They're a little easier to use than the, you know, kind of small thumb hole on the, uh, the SIG. It's not got, you know, a super easy thumb hole like something like that Spyderco does. Um, handles, definitely get a, uh, a materials upgrade or a more premium uh, type of materials here. You've got G10, which in and of itself is not premium, but it's not plastic. It's not injection molded like the Hogue. You've also got full liners, uh, skeletonized or drilled out in places to remove a little bit of weight. But those full length liners and the heavier G10 make the knife itself a fair bit heavier, 5.1 ounces here. So a little bit bulkier, a little bit heavier, a little bit more length on the blade. That'd be about how they compare between the two. Definitely a little more nimble on the Hogue. So depends on what you're going for. Each one of them does have a little bit of a uh, different personality, which is quite nice. All right, next question comes from Wake. Uh, Hi DCA, I work in construction, parentheses concrete work, and I'm looking for a good hard use fixed blade, one that can be used as a pry tool if needed, preferably with a Kydex sheath and under $300. Uh, when I think like pry, hard use pry tool, my mind immediately turns to the Becker BK3. Um, not really a construction expert, uh, certainly. I mean, the last time uh, I did a construction project, it took me a whole weekend just to get an interior door installed and it still ain't quite right. Uh, it shuts and locks, but that's, <laughs> that's about all I can say. But this knife right here is an absolute tank. Again, I don't know if the blade shape is quite what you're looking for, but you've got quarter inch thick of 1095 CV steel, very robust tip, sharpened leading edge, but you can certainly get in there and pry with it. Serration, partial serrations here at the back, which in construction, I could see that being a little more useful than my, uh, my typically preferred completely plain edge. 
very comfortable handles. Not the largest in the world, but still plenty for uh, for my hands to hold on to, which are slightly larger than average. But maybe if I'm wearing a pair of heavy work gloves, it'd be a little more cramped, but super solid. Much more affordable than your uh, $300 price point too, about $127. Uh, the sheath is not Kydex, but it is hard plastic and it clicks in kind of just like Kydex. And if you're, you want a little bit more, you've got a retention loop there to hold the, uh, the handle in as well. Just super solid tools. You got an awesome warranty on these. And if you manage to do something where you break this quarter inch thick piece of steel, the knife deserved to break <laughs> at that point. Um, yeah, you were probably doing something way, way, way beyond the scope of what should have been done. But shy of that, darn near indestructible. Gotta love it. All right, Ben asks, David, any recommendations for a Torx set that can be used for common knife maintenance and repair that includes most sizes needed? Thanks for your time and the great show. Well, thank you, sir. I have one here I actually really stand by myself. Uh, it's marketed by Boker, but it's actually a Weha Torx set, very highly regarded uh, maker of Torx bits. Comes in about 22 bucks, and you've got a standard bit here, uh, the T15 comes there. You're not gonna really need that for much, but inside the handle, you've got several other sizes, including a T8 and a T6, which are gonna be the most common. Swap them out to whatever you need. But the reason I love this so much, apart from the high quality bits, is the fact that it's stubby. And honestly, what I what I like to do on these is have two, either this and another one, or some other standalone Torx drivers, because there's gonna be certain things where you need to adjust from one side, but in order to do that, you actually have to hold the uh, screw captive on the other side. Perfect example of that actually is the Para 2. This, uh, this pin right here in front of the compression lock is kind of free spinning along the, the collar there on the inside. But because this unit is stubby, you can get it into the screw and actually hold the knife stable in your hand with the Torx bit palm or the Torx driver palmed in the same hand and then adjust from the other side. You can't really do that with any other shape really than just this. So it works super well. You can get two of them like uh, just like this if you want. They run about 22 bucks. Me personally, I've got one of these and then I've got uh, some other standalone drivers. I've, I've even got an old uh, Tor or a Kershaw Torx driver that with a couple bits that I keep with my Leatherman day to day. But key, key part of the arsenal, definitely a stubby set like this with the Weeha bits is a great way to go. All right, now we come to the lightning round for today. The first question is from Street Tough. Is there a knife made similar to the Mora's but has a full flat grind? Sure thing. Uh, Mora's are great uh, because of their quality and their low price, but of course they're pretty much all Scandi ground. Uh, take a look at the Condor Bush Glider. It's actually a full tang design similar to the Garberg, which is a much more expensive knife uh, than this. This is about 45 bucks, 1095, clip point shape, high flat grind, not a full flat, but pickings are not the most plentiful in this type of genre, but this guy definitely solid, great blade profile, great sheath, and you'll, it'll get you kind of that more a price to quality ratio that I think you're looking for. All right, Jeremy too asks, what is the best or rather your favorite German made knife? No classification of type. Thank you. Um, yeah, <laughs> best versus favorite is different. So I'm going favorite. Uh, right now, I really love the AK-1, the, uh, the Daily Knives Pocket Fix Blade. RWL 34 Powder Metallurgy Steel, about 200 bucks. Solid shape, you can get a clip point or this cool modified Warncliffe. And a true pocket leather sheath with the Ulti clip there. Just a whole lot of fun. And just a great little utilitarian shape as well. Next up, Mark Sestrich asks, Hi DCA, your videos have really opened my eyes to the great potential of the Nesmuk blade shape. I'm wondering, if there are any folding Nesmuks that could make a good EDC? Absolutely. Check out the Revo Ness. Uh, decently affordable, about 66 bucks. Quite attainable, D2 steel, ball bearing flipper, 3.6 inches long, nice stone washed finish. Really extra long deep carry pocket clip. Feels good in the hand. I've carried one of these before. 
uh, on several times actually. I happen to own a black one that I enjoy and uh, enjoy being part of my EDC rotation. Slice as well, pierce as well, thanks to the inline tip. Just a great, uh, great slicer, great EDC. Check that guy out. Next question comes from Chicken Drumstick. <laughs> Delicious. Hey, buddy. Uh, hey, DCA, have you ever snapped or bent a blade in half? Thanks. Um, if you'd asked me this a couple of weeks ago, I would say I'd only ever snapped tips. Uh, which I did on this uh, old school Mora of mine, kind of a, a classic Mora. This is actually a Mora of Sweden, not even a Mora Knief. Uh, so it predates the uh, the merger whenever that happened. And yeah, I bent the tip on this because I poked it in some wood and pried with it. Dumb. Uh, but easy enough, shortened it down, dropped the spine so I have a drop point as opposed to a clip point now. That's pretty cool. Uh, still carves excellently. I've done a lot of stuff with it. However, the other day, was cleaning out my office, cleaning out the closet in there, and I found this. This was a kitchen knife. I have no idea where the blade to this is, or even how this happened. But I did find this. So maybe I didn't do it. Maybe it was like gnomes or something. Trolls. The blade breaking trolls. So, there you go. I don't know why I'm just holding this up and not saying anything. Like, I expect you guys to react because can't. Not in real time, <laughs> anyway. Um, How many times I gotta tell you, you pay the goblins for their bladesmithing. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> anyway, which brings us to our most serious question of the day, which comes from Barry Hughes. Uh, company name Redacted continues to market free gear, just pay shipping. They have a rescue knife and a dagger. Are these just garbage? So I'd probably say, I'm not familiar with their stuff, but if you're not paying anything for the blades themselves, you're probably getting what you pay for. Um, so, so here's the thing. Normally, the, the most serious question of the day, I, I, I used to treat as a little bit of humor to close things off, but I did want to touch on this point. Um, inexpensive goods, cheap goods are fine. They, there's a place for it in, uh, in today's world. Knives, though, I do have a bit of an issue with because, you know, when we talk about cheap as an indication of quality, if a knife were to fail, especially if a knife were to fail catastrophically, the consequences are a lot higher than if your ice cube tray failed that you paid 25 cents for, you know what I mean? You could seriously injure yourself. You could, you know, ruin your only tool that you might need and in some kind of emergency situation. So I kind of like, I, I like to recommend spending a little bit more money than nothing on something like a knife that is going to be a, you know, has the potential to be a serious tool. Um, but on that note, I'm running a little low on, uh, on most serious question topics out there. So hit me with your best ones down in the comments. But that's all we've got time for today. Make sure to leave all your questions down there in the comments, not just your most serious ones. And if you want to get your hands on any of these knives, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program as well, so that when you put your money down on one of these knives, you earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. See you next time.